distinguished audience, my dear friends, we truly appreciate the support that you've given to the Ukrainian people. You are well aware that Ukraine is facing a tremendous, unbelievable, and one can even say insurmountable challenges. But we will overcome all these paramount challenges together, staying united, supporting each other, staying shelter to shelter against the Russian-led aggression, uh, making painful, tough, but necessary reforms in this country, protecting Ukraine and defending Europe and international order and international peace and stability. You, you've got the report what this government did, already done. What's my take on this? That's true, we passed a harsh austerity package. We imposed new taxes. We closed a number of tax loopholes. We substantially increased communal tariffs. We er eradicated, eliminated corruption in the energy sector. We entirely changed the way the state-owned enterprises is to be steered and governed. We want to launch a large-scale transparent privatization. We made a number of tremendous steps in changing this country. But the thing is that much depends on the patience and strong determination, not just of the government, but of the Ukrainian people. Just trust me, it's very difficult for the ordinary Ukrainian to live and to survive. Living standards drop substantially. And this is the aim of the government and our joint target and our joint task to improve life for the ordinary Ukrainians. And I strongly rely on your support. I strongly rely on your assistance. The best way to win the war against the Russian-led aggression is to make a Ukraine a success case story. To make Ukraine an example for everyone from the post-Soviet world that look, if you make reforms, if you are determined, if you go straight forward, the life will be better. Living standards will increase. Freedoms and liberties will be the key values for those who stick to these freedoms and liberty values. We've been fighting for the European values, for real, for real European values, and we sacrifice too much. And that's the reason why these people deserve more. I don't want to make any kind of comparison, but Greece already received $300 billion. With no war, with no Russian tanks, with no fight against the nuclear state, Ukraine received about $30 billion US dollars as an overall financial support from the IMF, from G7 member states, having the population four times higher than, for example, in Greece. It's important for us to stay united and we are committed to all reforms that already implemented in Ukraine. And what President Juncker said, that we have the deal, and I fully share this approach. The more we do, the more support we get. So, we are ready to do everything that's in our hands and in minds. Keep the faith, never give up. These are the mottos and the slogans and the idea we have in Ukraine. Please support this country. We deserve your support and together we will make a successful Europe Together, we will win this war against kleptocracy, against dictatorship, against poverty. And we, together, will present the free world with the real high living standards and real strong belief in our joint future, our joint future with the European Union. So, thanks again for 
coming to Kyiv. Thank you for your support. And, and I, I want again, especially focus on those who supported Ukraine. This is the free world. G7 member states, EU member states, everyone who donated and supported Ukraine supported to the global stability and peace in the world. So I truly commend and truly appreciate everything that we have done together, but we have a lot of things to do in the future. Thank you.